Have a good trip. See you next year. If you've got a free mooring, we're both just up the coast. We'll have to oh, take well, it. I'm sorry. Uh, that one's taken. It's for Paddy, one of our regulars. Not long now. No. Something about seeing old Paddy sail into the harbor sort of gives the heart a lift. Sounds silly, but I look forward to Paddy's visits almost as much as Santi. Yeah, yeah, me too. The jokes. Remember the one about the zebra and the roll of lino? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> vividly. See you later. Fragrant rose petal fondants or exotic Turkish nougat? I'll take the fondant. Nougat plays havoc with this bridge world. I won't be back before you're gone. Hope the train's on time. It was nice. I mean, you being here. Uh, give that to the lad. Why don't I help you sort out Pete's clothes that Jake and I could drop them off at the RNLI on the way to the station? Well, I'm, I'm a bit busy at the moment. I promised Auntie Nichols I'd help out with the refreshments for the candlelight procession. The beach party isn't for days. Mum, it's been nine months. I, kn I know it's painful, but I thought if there were two of us... You no, don't worry. I'll get round to it. I made you some sandwiches for the train. Well, the catering's usually awful. And the prices. Mrs. Thompson had to pay a pound for a bottle of water when they went to see their John. Now, there's tuna, egg and crab. Pete used to love crab. Do you remember when one bit him on the toe? Oh, I've forgotten the chocolate biscuits. Shall I go and get you chocolate biscuits? No, no, Mum, we're fine. Densely tropical or delicately floral? Delicately floral. I don't think it makes me smell like an air freshener. I know, I know. I'm behaving like a teenager. A woman of my age. It's ridiculous. It's great. I only see the man one week in every three months. It's worse than ridiculous. It's pathetic. Well, no one else thinks so. All your friends love him. How can one man be so wonderful? Well, probably because he can't hide how happy he used to be with you. He tends to sleep a lot when he first gets here. Mind you, once he's revved up, I had to get Mr. Butler in number four ceiling replastered. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm embarrassing you. After the Marilyn Monroe lookalike competition when I was ten, nothing could embarrass me. I'm only talking like this because it's so... Wonderful. After all the fun in the pub, when we close the door, it's as if we were the only people in the world. Jake. Yeah? Would you mind if we stayed an extra day? No, great. What about Matthew's party? They're only having burgers. Is the man going bonkers? No. She says I've got uncomfortable hands. That's stupid. Sharks probably got them. But all that was in that coffin were buttons. So why don't you marry him? He's asked you often enough. Nothing could stay this special forever. I'd rather have one week of bliss with Paddy every three months than be comfy and bored for a lifetime. Get out of here. Go on. We didn't do nothing. It was totally legit. Look, three cherries. Trying to stitch us up like you did our mum. No, don't be absurd. Now you're kicking us out for winning money fair and square. I call that discrimination. I got the uh, message. What's the emergency? Do you know anyone that can run this place? Well, what's happened to Jasmine? She's quit to go to the Rainbow in town. I've got businesses to run. Every minute I'm stuck here, I'm losing money. 
Right, you've had your last warning. Get on to the job centre. There's kids queuing up for work. I'll do it. No, thanks. I wouldn't put a monkey in charge of a banana factory. You had a gorilla persecuting an innocent woman. Out. Now. Dumb call, Simpson. Let us stay, and you'll probably get all your money back. As it is, we walk out with 20 quid. I thought you were off. Oh, well, we decided to stay on an extra day or so. Huh. Got this back now we haven't gone. Oh, no, it's all right. You keep it. Thanks. Thanks very much. Right, Jake, go on your bath, mate. Mm -hmm. Go on. Go on now. Mm -hmm. I don't think Mum's coping too well. <clears throat> Everything got churned up again, that's all. Well, maybe if you talk to her. We talk. I meant about Pete, how you both feel. Don't worry about us. We married very nicely. What's for supper? Sandwiches. Side of him. Call the Coast Guard and the police. Retire in. Coast Guard, Coast Guard, this is Harbour Master. No cereal. Steve had it. He had to go to work early. But just because I don't work, it doesn't mean I don't get hungry. And look, who's Nick the dinosaur? Don't look at me. Oi, get in the dinosaur. Maybe if Madam had handed over her winnings instead of spoiling a lovely face. I think he looks cool. <laughs> what do you think, Dad? You have to pay through notes for that. Uh... <laughs> See? Mum could have done with a catch for bribing the guards. The only person that's going to be paying out is Tony Simpson for wrongful dismissal. And from now on, you two just stay away from him. There's enough being said about us as it is. Steve, you finish up here. It's bloody all right. No, he's not aboard. The blue ocean was drifting. But that's ridiculous. Where would he go? You don't... No, not over. It can't have gone over. Maybe he's hit his head and fell in. Well, why? It was a calm night. Otherwise, a boat would be miles down the coast. Right. What's his medical history? Could have had a stroke, toppled over. Well, he's fine as far as I know. You'd have to ask his doctor. The Coast Guard are on their way. How long have we got? Until nightfall. If we haven't found Paddy by then, he'll be presumed dead. When was he due to arrive? Well, later today. He rarely sails at night. Maybe he couldn't wait. Where was he coming from? Well, he usually keeps this berth at Hamath. So why was he drifting back east? Why didn't he just come straight into Brighthaven? Well, I've got no idea. I'd have to look at the charts. I'll get on to Steve Ellis, the harbour master at Hamath, see what he knows. 
I know this is going to sound a really stupid question, but Paddy didn't have any worries, did he? Well, I'm sorry, I'm not the person to ask. The Blue Ocean's his home, but he spends most of his time in B&Bs. You don't get to be Fertiliser Salesman of the Year staying in one place. When did you last speak to him? Yesterday afternoon. He was in Hamath. He was going to set off after breakfast. How did he sound? Anxious. Anxious? To see me. I didn't sound depressed. What sort of crazy questions is that? We're talking about Paddy, for God's sake. I know. I'm only trying to look at all the possibilities. It's just a bit strange, that's all. I just heard about Auntie's friend. I'm really sorry. Yeah, thanks. Hey, what happened? Well, we're not sure. Oh, oh well, uh, tell Auntie if there's anything I can do. Right, yeah. Um, I, I thought you were leaving. Oh, yeah, Mum's not too well. Thanks for all your help, Auntie. We'll do our best, I promise. I don't think you should be on your own. It's all right, honestly. I want to be on my own. I couldn't get away sooner. How are you? In shock, I think. Naturally. Yeah, Mrs Peel gave you some cobblers about a cyclone. They don't know what's happened. Mm -hmm. Look, um... There's a... Get reporter outside from the local radio. Oh, I... yeah, don't worry, I'll, I'll do my best to keep him out of the way. But if he does manage to collar you, can you try not to mention the yacht was adrift off Bridehaven? Reuters update. Full scale search continues for the Oscar reported missing in the Bridehaven Bay area. Early optimism from the emergency services. Doing things, cleaning, arranging, rearranging. She says she's fine, but oh. How's your dad coping? In himself? I don't know. With her, he just ignores it, stays away. Have you tried talking to her? I know it sounds awful, but uh, I don't know how. Since Jake, there's been this distance between us. I thought she doted on him. Oh, she does. She wouldn't have wanted him not to happen, but just to happen in the proper order. After the degree, with the career and the husband. She always understood Pete more than me anyway. I'll have a word. Thanks. When I told her I was pregnant, she called me all the names under the sun and then she just dried her eyes and said they'd take care of me. I didn't let them, of course, but Mum was always the one with the TCP and the elastoplast, the one who made things better. Now she's, she's stretched so tight I'm scared she's going to rip apart. If we calculate the tides, wind factor and currents last night, we can roughly chart where a body might wash up. Uh, Jane, uh, can I have a word? Yeah, of course. I need an assistant for the arcade, and I wondered if you'd be interested. Oh, well, thanks, but... Well, I... it's only temporary until I get myself sorted out. Cash in hand, of course. Should be useful for someone in uh, in your position. It's a very responsible job. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> yeah, well, don't worry. I mean, I take care of all the tricky stuff. You just have to keep an eye on the place and handle the change. Oh, well, handling the change seems a bit tricky to me. I'm not sure if two years at university quite equipped me for that. They just something to do a piece on the missing yachtsman. What a way to go, eh? Didn't know there was killer whales off this coast.
You don't think... Poor Paddy. I'm sorry. Yeah. Have you told the police? Well, not yet. No, I thought I'd show them to you first. Oh, very thoughtful. Thank you. Maybe I'll go and lie down. So you're always telling me bottling things up doesn't help. Sometimes it's the only way. You should know that. Well, if you do want to talk... That's the problem with this bloody place. Nobody leaves you alone. Oh, God, I'm sorry. That was unfair. But it's natural you've had a terrible show. You're the most important person in my life, and now I'm shouting at you. What a mess. It's forgotten. I'll deal with everything. I don't deserve you. After all the promise of yesterday, I can't quite take it in. We could build a treehouse up here and have sleepovers. <laughs> One force nine, you'd wake up in Bournemouth. What's that writing? Pete and Mike, the untouchables. You mean Mike Mike? Yes, they, they were best friends. Why isn't your name there? Because I'm a girl. That's sexist. <laughs> Come on, open up or I'll kick the door down. Good trip, Paddy. I'd just like to reassure your group that all boat trips from this harbour are with official crews only and are therefore completely safe, OK? OK, well, listen, uh, this man will be assured. There's nothing like that. The boat's stolen property. Get a grip. I did a deal with old Tim's. I'm paying him the going rate. It's totally illegal. You can't charge people to take them out. You need safety checks, a certificate. I know the law, you moron. We're not charging him. Kelly's running a book on how Paddy snuffed it. The trip's a perk. Three to one suicide, 15 to two murder by pirates. What sort's our favourite? You buy me a drink. I'm sorry, really, but he turned up in the middle of the night. I'd never seen him in such a state. He was crying, shaking. He said he couldn't go on. He said he wanted to wipe the slate clean, start all over again. That's why I agreed to hide him. I had no choice, Mike. It was all so upsetting. We've had a full-scale search going on for you. What's the matter, Paddy? You in some sort of trouble? No, it's just... it's just too much, that's all. Well, you've got problems at work, you've broken the law, what? Well, I shouldn't be doing this to you. Especially Bella. I mean, if I didn't have you, I'd have had a low hurt. It's all right, you're safe here. Why don't you try and get some sleep, will you? you, you don't go. Hey, I'm not going anywhere. I'll just be in the kitchen with Mike. <laughs> How did you find out? Well, Paddy knew he'd be looking for his clothes. He's an excellent sailor. He always worked out roughly where they might wash up. So why didn't you believe he was dead? Well, the sea washes clothes off a body, but not tight jeans. And Paddy does like his jeans very tight. Anyway, you never shout at me. Please, believe me. I've hated every minute of this. I've lied to you, to everyone. They're all out there thinking that he must be dead. It's awful. Poor Elvis was so upset. I almost broke down and told him. You should have told me. I was torn. I didn't know what to do. Paddy kept saying, I can't take it, over and over. And he hasn't given you any clue as to what's triggered all this? I was really frightened. Suddenly, he was a stranger. Mm. 
Dearest Bella, I'm longing to see you. Even the seconds go too slowly. When do you send this? Yesterday. You've never done that before. Just made me think things were going to be even more special. We'll have to go to the police. No. The longer you leave it, the worse it will get. I don't care. The man's unwell. You can see that. He needs time to sort himself out. Please, Mike. I'll try and get some rest. The French have had the last of the cream teas. Oh, uh, what about crumpets? Yeah. With peanut butter and strawberry jam. Obviously a gourmet. <laughs> Apparently, a Paddy has connections with the CIA. Oh, who told you that? Mrs. Thompson or Mrs. Peel? The vicar. Mind you, he takes the telegraph. <laughs> I can't believe we're never going to see him again. Sorry to disturb you. No, it's all right. I'm just sitting here trying to get my head around it all. Who's your friend? <laughs> Jeremy. My dad brought him for me to stop me feeling lonely while they're in Australia. Do you fancy a beer? Oh, yes, please. Did you come up with anything at Paddy's office? Mm, no, not really. His personal mail's been redirected, care of the harbour master, Heyman. Boss said what a great bloke he was, but actually nobody seemed to know that much about him. How about you? Yeah, the same. Uh, Harbour Master said he set sail the usual time. He's expecting him back in a week. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Something's not right with all this. How do you mean? Well, it isn't just his disappearing that's a mystery. I mean, okay, Paddy used to tell great stories about his life in the fertiliser business and everything. But in the end, he was more interested in hearing about you. Well, yeah, that is pretty rare, I agree. Maybe I should go back and question Auntie again. There's got to be more she can remember. No, I, I wouldn't. She's really upset. Oh, poor Auntie. I've got to do something, haven't I? Paddy sent Auntie a plant two days ago. So? Well, he's never done that before. I was thinking maybe the garden centre it came from might have some account details. Rumour has it, in the Bridehaven Arms, you were in Navy Intelligence. Should we take a visit to this place, or what? What's this wee business? This is part of an official inquiry. Well, haven't you ever fantasised about being an undercover cop? Can't say it's at the top of my list of fantasies. OK. You can come along for the ride. I'll pick you up at 8.30. Nah, no, nah, I'm not going to crawl around the countryside in a panda car. I'll pick you up. Kids. That's more like it. Hickey's a juggler. Looks like Simpson ain't the only one who can make torches. Just a crusty old hippie. Oh. Adler was a boss! <laughs> Told ya. <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. Where do you think you're going? Sorry? <laughs> it's the height of the season. Tourists arriving by the coach, though. Boats queuing up to get in the Steve harbour. Steve can handle it. Oh, you've got to be joking. I suppose you've given him the key to the petty cash as well. If you've got any complaints, you go through the appropriate channels, right?
What did your boss say about a little adventure? Nothing. I haven't told him yet. Got him. Two days ago, he ordered a Japanese orchid to be delivered to Ms. Bella Nichols, the Pierce Hotel Brighthaven. Any other details? He also ordered some herbs to be sent to Lady Charlotte Savile at Abbott's House, Creswell, and an assorted selection of seed packets for a Mrs. Foyle at Clover Farm, Moncton. This car for a good cause. You lot should be into that. Over that must be Mrs. Foyle. OK, so what's that cover going to be? Well, we're from MI5, and we suspect Paddy of running an illegal trade in agricultural implements to the Russian Mafia. In other words, you haven't got a clue. We were told you know someone who sells fertiliser at very competitive rates. Paddy, yes. He's away at the moment on a sailing trip, but all his catalogues are in his study. Does this Paddy live here? Of course he does. He's my husband. <laughs> I can recommend the organic. You should see the size of my onions. <laughs> Lovely looking children. Oh, yeah, Rosie's eight and Eddie's ten. <laughs> Don't mind Barnabas. He's a soppy old thing. <laughs> he looks lovely. How did you meet him? Odd, oh, isn't it? How life works out. <laughs> I've been living here with my first husband. Then he ran off with an optician from Paul. <laughs> I'd seen it coming, even if he hadn't. <laughs> One day, Paddy arrived to sell me fertiliser. Well, he could see what state I was in trying to run the place alone, so he used to call back, you know, every other week to help out. <laughs> One thing led to another. And he asked you to marry him? Actually, I asked him. He was worried at first, you know, having to work away so much. But I told him, a day with him is worth a month with anyone else. <laughs> Just rush me out like that. My husband could be dead. She has a right to know. Actually, he isn't. What? Keep smiling. care about is auntie she adores paddy and that's what's important to me now if i put you in a difficult position then i'm sorry all right this conversation never took place i'll call it in later come on let's get on with the other address lady charlotte saville you don't suppose i didn't have a stop i doubt it interested in tracing her ancestry. Does the name Foyle mean anything to you? Foyle? No. But the name Doyle does. That's the name of my husband. Paddy. Don't worry, you can't be related to him. I'm the one with the title. He only joined the family 15 years ago. Maybe if we could speak to him. He's away, I'm afraid. Well, I can't imagine wanting to leave such a beautiful place. He's sales manager for an agricultural byproducts firm, so he has to travel. He's off sailing at the moment, recharging the batteries, he calls it. I noticed some amazing blue roses on our way in. I wondered if we could take a closer look. Of course. They're Paddy's pride and joy. We could sail away and never come back. I've got family here, friends, guests. 
I can't just abandon them. Bella, you're the only woman I've ever really loved. I want you with me all the time. Look, if we sail due south, we'll hit South America. <laughs> Imagine it. You and me dancing in the carnival of life. Wild, exotic days and hot, steamy nights. The blue ocean's been impounded. We'll steal down in the dead of night. Come on, we can do it. Paddy, please, tell me what's happened. They're called Blue Ocean. Must be tough, your husband being away so much. Somehow it's so special when he's with us, we don't seem to resent it. You've got children? Rosie and Eddie. My father didn't have any boys to carry on the family name, so Paddy insisted I keep my maiden name. Paddy sounds wonderful. How did you meet him? Well, I just finished a rather sordid affair with a peer. Rather thought he was the man for me till the night he gave me a hairbrush and asked if he could call me nanny. Paddy was with the estate manager. Heard me crying in the stables. He was just so wonderful. He listened. Lent me his handkerchief. Well, after the men I'd met. It was a fairy tale romance. For me. When I first asked him to marry me, he was very reluctant. He felt as being a commoner would make life difficult for me. But when I told him I couldn't live without him, well, he just said yes. Get your torches, 150 for the life procession. Straight up. You. Over here, over here we go, we go. How many would you like? Three, there you go. There's three lovely candles for you. Hold up. Oi, what are all these? Mum, I bought them cheap. People need them for the light procession. These torches are for charity. Look, if you're thinking of pulling a fast one, you'll have me to answer to. OK, sorry about that. You change, you change, you change. There you go, thank you very much. How many would you like? Where did he get the energy from? Well, in confidence, Auntie said he slept a lot the first couple of days he was with her. Maybe we should enter him in the Olympics. Or what event, Kaby toss him? I mean, it's not like he's awful to them. He takes care of them, they seem to adore him. Yeah, so does Auntie. Find out about one wife's bad enough, but two... What are you going to do? For my chief, of course. Oh, what choice have I got? Paddy is a bigamist, he's faked his own death. If they knew I was withholding evidence... Well, I could always say I found him when on the beach. He had amnesia. It just give us another 24 hours. To do what? Well, I don't know. At least let Auntie have time to absorb the news before the place is swarming with reporters. I know I've no right to ask you. No, you haven't. And if this all goes pear-shaped, I will drop you in it to save my job. Well, thank you. You're amazing. Now, I'll try not to compromise you any more than I already have. Spoil sport. Oh. I should take you apart. Oh, you know me. I just tried to keep everybody happy. There's a lot of pain out there. There's a lot of pain in here. I'm so sorry. You must believe me. You're the one that I really love. You're the only woman I've ever asked to marry me. Well, actually, that's true. They asked him. I tried to keep them secure and content, both of them. You'd, you'd like the kids. They're really great. What are they called? Eddie and Rosie times two, and both dogs are called Barnabas. And the women? Married names are Foyle and Doyle. If a letter accidentally goes to the wrong address, they think it's a spelling mistake. You're obviously pretty good at this big of me game. I never saw it as a game. I cared about them both very much, that's why I married them, but... Suddenly, with you, it was the real thing. I mean, with them, it was just Horlicks and a, and a cuddle afterwards. But, but with you... You lied to me, Paddy. And your other families. I look at you and my heart stops. What I feel for you, what we do together, none of that is a lie. So why did you decide to disappear and break the cycle? I was exhausted. Two wives. 
two sets of children working all hours so they could be cared for. Well, what were they supposed to think when you never came back? Well, I'd made provision. They would have been well taken care of. So you're involved in an insurance scam as well? No, no, no. I, I wouldn't do anything like that. No, no, I'd, I'd made some good investments. I've always been pretty lucky in the markets. Why now, Paddy? I don't know. Something just snapped. All those people around me, and I felt so alone. Time's running out. I, I wanted something for me for a change. I, I wanted to be with you. Not just for a week here and there, but forever. You must think I'm a gullible old fool. No, everyone fell for it. We all liked him. He wanted me to run away with him. I was tempted, but then I thought of you. You've given up enough because of me. <laughs> Maybe if you hadn't been saddled with a kid. I'm not single because of you. I'm single because that's the way I wanted to be. Yes. It was a bit of a shock at first when you arrived. All those endless questions took some getting used to, not to mention the offside rule. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sometimes worried that you kept me out of guilt when Mum abandoned me. I mean, she's your sister. I got the best part of the bargain. A lovely son and no husband to run after. Some example I set you. You are the most caring person I know. And you're a smooth-talking rat bag. God, this love business hurts. Go on, you have a good cry. What? And ruin me makeup? I want to see Auntie. How is she? Well, maybe you should call another time. Oh, uh, sure. Of course. Jane! You, you've got to come. It's your mum. I'll give you a lift. really liked it, except Pete. Do you remember the time he swallowed the six months? He's mucking about, and then next thing we knew, it had come on. Oh, Dr. Hughes. And it cast her oil. Maybe I'll... Maybe I'll make a put anyway. You never know. Oh. Oh. <gasps> How is she? Is she all right? In bed, shaking like a leaf. Dad's with her, and I've called Henry, so... If there's anything I can do. Oh, well, no, taking care of Jake was great. Thanks. Yeah, he, uh, he seems to think I'm a sexist pig. Oh, yeah, well, these days, girls are allowed to play cowboys and Indians. You don't mean Native Americans. You and Pete always had to get the better of me. I'll get Jake out of that T-shirt. What's the matter? Pete's not around anymore, so why waste time talking about him? Look, Pete was my best mate. I think about him every day. But that's no comfort to you and your family. And you want him here now. Look, what can I say is going to bring him back? What you doing? 
Hey, we all want to toast the good news. It's a private celebration. Maybe if you'd like to say something, Paddy. Well, it... It was never my intention to hurt anyone. I mean, you... You've both been smashing wives in your way. It's just that, I, I, I don't know, the whole thing, it just, it just snowballed. You felt sorry for us? To begin with, yes. But there's more to it than that. I mean, you're, you're strong women. It's just that you, you didn't believe in yourselves. But look at you. You run homes, you bring up families, mostly on your own. What about the children? Well, I know I took some persuading by both of you. But I promise that each of those children came into this world wanted and cherished. Sorry to butt in, but how do you manage Christmas? His mother's allergic, allergic to, to dogs. dogs. He'd have Christmas lunch. Early dinner. With us and spend either Christmas night. Or Boxing Day with her. No wonder you were so tubby in January. I do realize what I've done is unpardonable. I'll hand myself over to the police immediately. The two of us need to talk. The tide comes in here pretty quickly. Uncle Pete said we had to wait very last minute and make a dash for it. Unfortunately, you waited too long. We were cut off. If the old harbour master hadn't been out in his boat... Do you know, it's the only time I remember Nan spanking us. <laughs> you can't blame her. She nearly lost both her kids in one day. Well, it wasn't your fault. It was Uncle Pete's. Oh, well, Pete tried telling her one thing about Pete. He always owned up. I suppose she was teaching me that being with Pete was my responsibility, and if I drowned, well, I would have been responsible as well. <laughs> it's been fun with the train stuff, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it has. Come on, then. I like Mum. When? The other day, the regatta. Mike didn't take me out on his boat. I hit him on the speedboat, got all bumpy and I fell in the water. Mike saw me and jumped in. Let me hope in time the kids will understand. Well, it could be in jail. Well, that's what I deserve. At least I'll stay put for a while instead of running around the country wearing myself out. It's meant to be a punishment, not a holiday. Look, it will be. <laughs> I'm missing your aunt already. Take care of it for me, will you? Oh, it's a bit late for that. The damage has already been done. Look, I'll make it up to her. You'll see. When I come out of prison, I'll be... I'll be really free, and, and we can make a fresh start together, just the two of us. We're both extremely distressed and horrified by your deception. After much discussion, we've come to the agreement that Despite the fact that you've lied to us and let us down, we want things to go on as they were. You've been a wonderful lover and a fabulous father. A rare combination. And only having your husband around one week and two does have its compensations. What, a, what about the police, the bigamy charges? Rosie One has a GCSEs next year. They need two as trials for their doors under 12s. If you care about the children and us, none of this will ever come out. It won't be easy to heal the wounds, but if we all try, who knows? Of course, they can't be anybody else. From now on, we'll be ringing up each other to make sure we know where you are. Women want things to remain as they were. They still don't know the ultimate decision rests with you. Right. Yeah, well, both women seem pretty certain. Please, please, I don't want to hear any of this. I'm in uniform. All right? All right. Thanks. But one day when I'm out of my uniform, you can tell me everything. You owe me. Big time. Get your torches here. Don't panic. There's plenty for everyone. 
Oi. All the money from those torches goes to charity, or I'll report you. I don't think you'll find the vicars complaining. I'm watching you. You didn't give all the money to charity, did you? Obviously, I had to cover my overheads. Charity begins at home in my book. Don't give me that. You hate reading. Get your torches here. Don't be left in the dark for the light procession. Torches, £1.50. Come and get them. could still run away. Do you really think I would want to be with a man who could abandon those families? No, of course not. In truth, I don't think I could have gone through with it. The moment of madness is past. It was glorious, but it was a fantasy. And if there's one thing that a woman of my age should know, is that there is no such thing as a perfect relationship. We had a damn good try, though, didn't we? I don't suppose I'll be seeing you again. How do you say goodbye to the love of your life? You give them a kiss and you walk away. Saved Jake's life. He told me everything. Falling in, speedboat. He nearly died. I don't think he'll do it again. Yeah, well, um, you let me stand there and, and say those things. I mean, why didn't you tell me? It was a difficult time for everyone. I just thought it was easier for you to be mad at me than. Yeah, well, you have no right to decide how I should feel. No. No, I realize that. Why am I angry with you? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please, don't say it was a pleasure. What other secrets are you hiding? I'm just glad Jake's all right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, me too. 